Hello everybody and welcome back to Certified Collectibles. Today we're going to be taking a look at the WADA certified Atari 2600 video games. Now on May 1st of this year, Heritage Auction put some of these in their signature auction and they just received record results. So the market for the Atari 2600 has been on fire lately. Because of that, a lot of our clientele have been asking us if this is something they need to be collecting or investing in. So today we're going to take a look at some of those auction results and analyze the market a little bit and see if the Atari 2600 is a worthwhile investment going forward. So to get started, let's take a look at a couple of those auction results so we have a base to start our conversation. Now the first game we're going to look at is Frogger, WADA certified 9.8 A++. Classic video game, everybody knows this from their childhood, they played the Atari 2600. This one here sold for $5,040. Star Wars Emperor Strikes Back, another iconic game for the Atari 2600 and the very first licensed Star Wars game ever. This was WADA certified 9.6 A+. This sold for $2,400. Spider-Man WADA certified 9.8 A++. This is the first game to ever feature a Marvel superhero and the first game to ever feature Spider-Man. This sold in the recent auction for $9,000. Space Invaders WADA certified 9.4 NS meaning no seal. It did not have cellophane sealing it. It was just glued shut. This is the early production run. This one sold for $2,880. Mario Brothers, the very first home console game to feature Mario and Luigi, 9.2 A+. This one sold for $9,000. Pac-Man, WADA certified 9.4 NS, released in 1982. The best-selling game for the Atari 2600, selling 7 million copies back in his day. This one sold for $2,640. And finally, Sword Quest Waterworld. Now, this is certified by WADA 7.5A+. This has always been considered a holy grail among the Atari 2600 collectors. This was a mail-order exclusive from the Atari Club. It was part three of a four-part series, but part four was never made, so this is the last game that was ever made for the series. This is one of the most difficult games to ever find sealed. Rumor has it there are fewer than 10 copies that ever existed sealed. So to find in any condition is, is rare. So this game sold in the Heritage Auction for $3,840. Now it's important to take a look at the factors that make pop culture collectibles worth investing in. One of the key factors and probably one of the most important is popularity and desirability of the item going forward. Now, Spider-Man is much more popular, much more desirable than, let's say, the Sword Quest that we just mentioned in the auction, which is why Spider-Man sells for $9,000 in the same auction that the Sword Quest Waterworld sold for $3,800. Now, of course, the grades are much different, but with only fewer than 10 known to exist for the Waterworld, you, you would expect that game to sell for much higher than $3,800. Whereas Spider-Man 9.8, you would expect there to be a lot more of these graded over time. It still sold for $9,000. Why is that? Much more popular. Marvel's still pushing this brand. Everybody knows Spider-Man. Everybody, a lot of people played this game when they were young, whereas the Sword Quest was a mail or exclusive. Fewer people played that game. So this one everybody's familiar with, very popular. It's going to be more desirable going forward. Another factor, of course, that affects the price and the value in the future is the condition. Now, Spider-Man 9.8, probably one of the highest grades you'll ever see for this game. Um, 9.8, 9.6, 9.4, that's what we consider investment grade quality. So you typically want to stay above that. Unless it is a very, very scarce game, like the Waterworld, where 7.5 might be one of the few that exist sealed. So that might be the highest grade game. Well, we won't know until all the copies are graded. But for investment purposes, 9.4, 9.6, 9.8. Another factor that determines the value going forward is the population in each grade. Now, the Spider-Man 9.8 will probably have a lot more graded than, let's say, one of the earlier games, or E.T., for instance, over here. A lot of these were destroyed because it's such a controversial game, let's say. It's one of the games that was credited with bringing down the video game boom. So there may be a lot more Spider-Man 9.8s than there are E.T. 9.8s. So the population also affects the value going forward. We're going to take a look at the CGC comic book market in comparison to the WADA certified game market because there's a lot of the same players, a lot of the same investors. The grading tiers and the grading structure is similar. 
So we're going to compare some of the recent price history for some mo more modern comics, let's say 1970s, 1990s, and, a, and one in the 2000s. So we'll take a look at a couple comic books, see what they're selling for, the populations, and maybe that'll give us some insight into whether or not the prices being paid at the Heritage Auction recently were fair value. Now let's take a look at our first comic book for comparison. Now this is The Incredible Hulk number 181, uh, published by Marvel Comics back in 1974. Everybody knows this book. It's become m much more valuable in recent years than it was 10 years ago. It's worth taking a look at. So CGC has graded in 9.8, 134 of these. In 9.6, 347. In 9.4, 578. Amongst all the grades, CGC has graded a total of 13,219 copies of this. Let's take a look at the prices of these realize. In 9.8, this book sells for about $32,000 in auction. In 9.6, for $11,500. And 9.4, for about $8,500. Now let's take a look at another book. This is Batman Adventures, released by DC Comics in 1993. This is the first appearance of Harlequin, so an important book for collectors. CGC has graded 9.8, 873 of these. 9.6, 1,366, 9.4, 1,037, for a total of 5,919 copies across all grades. In 9.8, this is going to cost you about 1,600 bucks. In 9.6, about $650. And 9.4, 475 bucks should get you a copy. Now let's take a look at an even more recent book, The Walking Dead number one. Now this was released by Image Comics in 2003. Incredibly popular. Very desirable book to own. So let's take a look at how many exist. CGC 9.8, there's 1,064. CGC 9.6, there's 941. And 9.4, there's 588. And there's a total of 3,210 copies across all grades. Now there are 24 of these that exist in 9.9. .9, but since we're looking just at 9.4 to 9.8 as it compares to the WADA certified video games, let's just take a look at those. Now 9.8, this is going to cost you about 1,900 bucks, 9.6, $1,200, and 9.4, about $975. All right, so what does all that data mean and how does it help us determine whether or not the WADA certified Atari 2600 video games are a good investment? Well, let's take a look. The Incredible Hulk 181, there's 134, 98, 347, 96, 578, and 9.4. And there's 13,000 that have been Sort of sent in for certification for CGC. That means only 8% of all those books ever sent in have been in the investment grade quality. Let's take a look at Batman Adventures. In 9.8, there's 873. 9.6, there's 1,366. And in 9.4, there's 1,037. So about 55% of all the books that were sent in came back in investment grade. So I would not say this is a relatively scarce book, but still it's going to cost you about $1,000 to get a good copy for investment. Let's take a look at our last CGC comic. Now, The Walking Dead number one, released in 2003, was an iconic book. A lot of people were hoarding comics during that period of time, so there's a lot in mint grade. Let's take a look. There's 1,064, 98, 941, 96, 588, and 9.4. Now, that means about 80% of all the books ever sent in certified in investment grade quality. And I think about 33% came back in 9.8. Like I said, there are about 24 99s, so this book in mint grade or investment grade quality is readily available on the market. The population is, is pretty large for an investment grade comic, but you're still going to be paying about $1,500, $2,000 to get an investment grade copy. So population doesn't always affect the price going forward. Condition affects the price. Popularity affects the price and desirability. So that relates to the WADA certified video games directly. The more popular the game, the more desirable, the better investment potential going forward. The higher the grade, the better the condition, the better investment potential going forward. The lower the pop, maybe the better investment going forward. But as we just mentioned with some of the CGC comics, some of those populations are very large. So it all depends on whether or not the population satisfies the demand on the market. So those are hopefully some factors that will help you decide whether or not you want to get into investing in the Atari 2600 WADA certified video game market. 
Now, if you like this video, you find it helpful, please leave us some comments in the comment section below. Give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to our channel for more videos.